Okay, we look at in this very short video uh, a, a system where the mass of the system um, is changing. Um, the classic example of this is the case of a rocket and its propulsion system. In a rocket, we start off with a certain amount of mass and during the thrust of the rocket, some mass is expelled by the rocket uh, while the total mass of the system remains constant. The mass of the rocket actually is changing. And the result of all of this is that the rocket is uh, experiences a thrust. So let's take a look at this. Uh, we start off by looking at a rocket of given mass, m, um, traveling at some speed v uh, at some time t. At a, a, a short instant of time later, t plus dt, uh, we have the rocket expelling some mass, um, a dm. Uh, and, and in this case, we're going to assume that dm is, uh, since, since the mass of the rocket is actually decreasing, uh, dm is a negative quantity. Uh, the rocket is being expelled at a relative speed u to the rocket and so the speed of the uh, gas being expelled is v plus dv uh, minus u and we have the rocket of mass m plus dm again dm is negative and it's moving forward at a greater speed of v plus dv so here's the before and this is the after and what we want to look at is uh, during this process, since the uh, rocket exerts a backward force on the gas, the gas exerts a forward force on the rocket, uh, the net force on the system is zero, and therefore momentum of the system is conserved. So we can use the conservation of momentum. And so what we're going to do is list at time t, um, all we have is the mass of the rocket, velocity of the rocket, so its momentum is dv the expelled exhaust, um, there's no expelled exhaust at, at this time. At some later time, uh, the mass of the rocket is m plus dm, the speed of the rocket, v plus dv, so the momentum of the rocket is given by this product. Here's the expelled gas, uh, the mass is minus dm, traveling at this speed. Again, u is the relative speed of the exhaust. Uh, the speed of the exhaust relative to the rocket. And so the mass of the uh, expelled gas is the product of these two quantities. And so what we want to do is set the total momentum of the system before equal the total momentum of the system after. Conservation of momentum. Mass of the rocket initial, mass of the exhaust initial must equal mass of the rocket final plus mass of the exhaust final. Uh, or the momentum. Uh, the momentum of the exhaust initial we know is zero. Uh, and so the momentum of the rocket initial must be equal to the momentum of the rocket final plus momentum of the exhaust final. So substituting in the values we have in our table, we get something like this. And then what I do in this equation here is just multiply everything out. And so we get something pretty messy looking quantity here. But what we can see is that here we have MV, big MV, big MV on both sides. Those are going to cancel. Here we have a plus VDM. Here we have a minus VDM. Those will cancel. Now this quantity right here, these are two infinitesimals multiplied together. DM and DV are very small. And so we're going to think of DM times DV as being a negligible quantity. That simplifies our equation to something that looks like this, which we when we do a little bit of algebra, ends up with an equation that looks like this. And what we want, what we like to do is to be able to solve this equation for velocity as a function of mass. Well, that involves a little bit of calculus, but any first-year calculus student will be able to do this. Um, just integrate both sides of the equation from v initial to v final to mass initial to mass final. Um, and this involves uh, a natural logarithm function. 
and it looks something like this. Now, Vf minus Vi, that's a change in the speed of the rocket, is equal to U, the relative speed of the exhaust, times the natural log of the ratio of the masses. Now, if we look at limiting cases, for instance, suppose uh, uh, the rocket doesn't exhaust anything, so mass, initial mass, final are the same. Uh, natural log of 1, we know is 0, yes, 0. So we get a V final minus V initial equals 0, which means the rocket doesn't speed up. So in, in that simple uh, limiting case, we see that our results are confirmed. Um, moving ahead, again, starting with this equation, uh, if we basically divide both sides by dt, dt, we have a dv dt on the left side and a dm dt. dv dt is just the acceleration, and dm dt is the rate at which mass is uh, being expelled, or actually this rate is minus dm dt. And so we can rewrite the equation that we get uh, in this form. This quantity ma is the force acting on the rocket, so this r times u, uh, the product of uh, the rate at which mass is being expelled times the relative speed of the exhaust is equal to the thrust, that additional force that pushes the rocket forward and helps it to accelerate. So we end up with a, a couple of fairly simple relationships um, by looking at this system where the mass changes. Um, here's a, a typical problem. During a lunar mission, it's necessary to increase the speed of a spacecraft by 2.2 meters per second when it's moving at 400 meters per second. Uh, the exhaust speed is 1,000 meters per second. What fraction of the initial mass? spacecraft must be burned and ejected. Well, this quantity here is the Vf minus Vi, how much we want to increase the speed by. Uh, this is the speed. Uh, and here is the relative speed of the exhaust. And so plug into the equations will allow us to um, get the results that we want. Uh, here's another kind of typical, but but typical problem, related problem, but it's stated, it, it's, it's a little bit different. Here we have a railroad cart moving at a constant speed of 3.2 meters per second under a grain elevator. Now grain drops into it at a rate of 540 kilograms per What force must be applied to the railroad cart in the absence of friction to keep it moving at constant speed? So this is not a case where mass is being expelled by the railroad cart to speed it up. Instead, mass is being added to the railroad cart. Uh, and, and that would, in, in effect, slow it down. So the question is, what force must be uh, applied to the railroad cart uh, to keep it moving at constant speed? And I, I hope you can see the relationship of this problem to the variable mass problems and the equations that we derived earlier. They are very, very, very much related. We use the same equations, even though, in this case, mass is not really being expelled. Uh, mass is being added instead. So take a look at this, this problem also. If you have questions, then, of course, come see me, and we'll talk about this. Okay, that's the end of this particular video.